Okay, so welcome everyone to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. And today we're continuing the theme of virtual online induction. Now we had heard in the past of a separate uh, approach used by Glasgow Caledonian University, but today we're going to be hearing from the City of Glasgow College and Scott Harrison, who will be talking about how they use existing systems to deliver the student induction experience to give them a bit of a heads up before they actually come online and come into campus. So, Scott, tell us more. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me uh, to speak today, Kenji. I want to first start off by saying I am not a technology or IT expert, but thankfully we have Joe Wilson here, who I'm sure will be able to answer any of those questions. Um, but I was leading uh, on the development of the content of our new Access DLE DLE, so I'm happy to, to share um, that with you today. So I'm the Associate Director Learner Journey at City of Glasgow College. And in a normal year, I would be leading uh, our Get Ready for College pre-induction program. And that's where we would physically have the students coming into the building and doing team building, getting their timetables, uh, getting their student ID cards, meeting the staff, but obviously, we can't do that this year. As with all colleges, we were unable to physically be uh, in the building to bring the learners in. So we had to be quite innovative and create a new form of sharing out this information with new students. So with senior management, student services, learning technologies, marketing, IT, and the academic faculty staff, we worked together to produce content uh, and it, it really was a cross-college collaborative project that materialized in really a very quick, short two months, I would say, with many, many meetings and emails going in between. We had a technical challenge that our new students couldn't access our, uh, our VLE because they were not enrolled yet. So our talented learning technologies team produced a, a mirror platform that can be accessed by anyone using their personal email address. Um, but the look and the content is similar to the platform that they'll use once they're enrolled and on their course. So this has the benefit um, that they'll already be familiar with navigating the VLE once they're on their course. So our academic faculty staff uh, were instrumental in producing introductory videos uh, to add to our new platform. And this was an excellent opportunity for them to work with our learning technologies, IT, library, and marketing stuff, uh, and help increase their own digital skills, which will obviously benefit them uh, in developing online learning materials this year. We used multiple platforms, as I'm sure all of you are. So Zoom, Teams, Facebook, WhatsApp, YouTube, you, you name it, and we've tried it. Um, so I think the best thing is I'm just going to actually uh, share my screen and show you what it looks like. Um, I'll go through each of the tiles and each of the sections. So we've developed, developed it into sections. So we've got Welcome to City, we've got Student Life, get ready for college, what you need to know, and then there's a section for each faculty to add curriculum specific content. So there are lots of videos in this and I won't show them all to you. You, you can actually get the link and, and log in yourself. Like I said, anyone can use their own email address to access it. And we've already had over 5,000 um, uh, new users register to use this. Um, but I might clip on click on some videos just to show you a little bit of content. So just a quick login. And I'm going to move your faces on my screen over there. So they just click on this and then you can see Design have created tiles for the different sections. And like I said, each of our four faculties has their own area. So in Welcome to City, we have an introduction and then we have 
a um, remote video welcome from our principal. We have we already had virtual tours of our campuses, but we updated these um, to be more timely uh, for our current situation. And our student engagement team were really good um, with creating Kahoot quizzes. So you can go in and test your knowledge after you've taken the virtual tour. So it's a bit more interactive and, and fun. We then have my area, student services, with a welcome from our director. And you'll see throughout this that we have included um, British Sign Language videos, which goes a bit beyond the normal provision for induction, but it sets a high, um, high standard in terms of accessibility. And Kenji um, pointed out that this is uh, good for the, the upcoming public sector body website accessibility legislation that comes into force in September. And I think you said the mobile app section comes into force next year. So we obviously want this to be accessible for all of our uh, students. So our new presidential team uh, has been getting their induction as we speak and planning for the year ahead, which will be very different from any other previous year. So we have an introduction from our student, our new student president, and he actually filmed that from Spain, uh, which is where he's from. So if we go to student life, so it took quite a lot of time to uh, liaise and communicate with students to get uh, some vlog videos, transcribing scripts, getting the BSL versions. Um, we had an external editing company, thankfully, uh, with uh, the professional experience that I do not have to edit the videos. So we have a video on what it's like to be a first year student in college what it's like to stay in accommodation in our residence halls, getting involved in the Students Association, and what uh, support you can get from learning support. So I'll just click on a wee example here. Hi, my name is Laura, and I'm one of the Learning Support and Development Advisors at City of Glasgow College. Learning support is here to support students with additional support needs studying at the college. The department can offer a wide range of support to students, including personal learning support plans that detail what reasonable adjustments may be required, and also provide a summary to your lecturers to let them know about your needs in the teaching and learning environment. We also offer in-class support, loan of equipment to students to support their learning, and if necessary, we can complete disabled students' allowance applications to get students their own funds to purchase their own equipment. We also have a team of learning support lecturers who are able to offer study skills support this service offers one-to-one -one support with your coursework and also gives you some support with organising and managing your workload. Or if you need a bit of proofreading before you're submitting anything, we can do that as well for you. Everybody is different and everybody learns in different ways. Therefore, your support will be tailored to meet your specific needs. You'll be involved in this process from beginning to end and supported by experienced members of staff in a collaborative manner to ensure that you have the correct support in place. It is important that you're comfortable with the support the support that you're receiving and that your support plan is flexible so we can make any adjustments as you're progressing throughout your learner journey. Thomas is here today to tell us a little bit about the support that he received while he was studying with us. Hi my name is Thomas and I completed my HNC in Architectural Technology at the City of Glasgow College. Before starting... Okay so like I said you can go in later and if you want to watch all of these videos please feel free but I wanted to, to share that one because I thought it was really good that we had a staff member's point of view, but then also the learner who went through um, support and give his opinion, which uh, was a positive one. And if you see, these are on our City YouTube channel and there are subtitles, um, as you probably know, on YouTube for all of these videos. Going to the next tab is Get Ready for College. So, Student funding and finance, we know that's very important. And what we did was we produced a funding easing that went out prior to uh, us having uh, this platform ready. Uh, I need to just move you, your faces again. 
So I won't go through all of this, but it's got all sorts of helpful information and links um, to other information that they might need. So I will just go back. So uh, that's information on funding. And then we have a video of a, a member of staff from admissions and funding to talk about the process and to give helpful tips on that. Accommodation, we again produced uh, an accommodation guide for students. And again, it's got interactive links for all sorts of information that they might need to know. Um, and obviously there's a bit of apprehensions lots of emails from students. Should I sign a lease? Should I get a flat? Um, will I be in halls? When will I be able to get into halls, etc. Then we have information on learner support and we have another member of staff from that area with a, a video um, and it links to our website and gives information about how we'll be, we've already started contacting students to start creating their personal learning support plan. And it has all their the links to the website and contact uh, details. Health and well-being. So again, this was before this Access BLE was created. We produced uh, a self-care easing. So all sorts of apps that they can be using, self-help resources, also reiterating that we have the big white wall, which is now called Together All. What support and activities we'll have once they can get on campus. Our counseling service, which we have increased during lockdown and we've been doing, doing um, phone and video counseling sessions. So lots of information there. Again, links to our mental health and well-being and again, a staff video explaining what support we can offer. Then we have Library Services has created uh, a guide to their services and a video links to helpful resources and the website and their contact information. We previously had eight steps to success, which for this um, Access VLE, we decided to narrow it down to five steps. So be organized, get connected, start learning, stay motivated, and get involved. And we wanted those to kind of be in order of the, the map of their journey. So be organized before the start of your course, you know, pre-enrolling, getting your funding sorted, uh, any support you might need, your accommodation, getting involved with the Students Association. Get connected. So what technology can they access and what if they need um, other assistive technology. So we have a, a PDF here of assistive technology that they can use. That's really helpful. Links again to the learning support page. Once they start learning, so uh, tips for study, work, where you study. We have a, a study guide with study tips here with helpful links and videos. Then staying motivated, that's for all of us. So your physical health, your mental health, and getting involved. Uh, freshers obviously will be very different this year. It's gonna be all online. Uh, our Students Association has been working extremely hard. They're going to have a completely online class rep system this year. We will still have clubs and societies. Um, we wait until the students start to ask them what they want us to offer. Uh, My Voice, um, that is the student democracy where they generate ideas for projects uh, for the year. What you need to know. So IT um, accounts and equipment. So we have sent uh, a questionnaire to all students to find out 
uh, well, first of all, to tell them for their course what uh, hardware and software they will need, to ask them what they already have, what they don't have, if they plan to buy it, or if they need support with that, and including access to Wi-Fi. So we've had, I think, almost 3,000 responses now, um, and we are in the process of ordering more computers um, and finding out how we're going to get them to the students. So that's information about logging on, password, getting support, fire safety. We just kept that brief and also the no smoking policy because most of them won't physically be on campus at the start. So then we go into the four faculties and uh, there's an introduction from the dean of that faculty. And then we, we're, we're slowly adding content. I think this will increase dramatically next week when the teaching staff are back. But we've got um, videos and information about different courses. And it's really kind of meet the team. Here's what you'll need for your course. Here's what your course is going to be like because it will be different this year. So let's click on here's just a, a brief intro. Hello everybody, welcome to City of Glasgow College. I'm David McKinney and I'm head of the media department. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the practical journalism course. Here are some of the tutors you're going to have at the start of the year and I'll ask them to introduce themselves. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Matthew Kerr and I'll take you for public affairs in block one and I'll see you all in September. Hello everyone, my name is Louise Halkett. I will be meeting you in September in Block 1 to help you achieve I look forward to meeting you all in August. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Tom Churchill. I'll be taking you in uh, August, September for... Um... Okay, so that one's obviously just literally introducing who's going to be teaching them. Education and Humanities, an introduction from the Dean. And then, it's again, uh, course information. financial services, business and management. And these are all, again, on our YouTube um, channel. Hospitality and leisure, introduction from the Dean. Information on hair and beauty, culinary arts, hospitality and tourism. If we go to the hair and beauty, um, I'm trying to remember which ones we'll find out just now. Right, so these, they have Google Docs, which has information, summer to-do list, units you're going to study, frameworks, and lecture contact details, and then there are pages for each of these, ordering your, your kit and your PPE. And I think there's one more. So this one is about the services on campus and then getting in touch. And learning support funding, admissions, etc. And then finally, nautical and STEM, which I think we're, we're waiting for content for this. But we did have some former learners who also provided videos. Hi there, my name's Christy and I'm a student at City of Glasgow College studying electrical engineering. For me, the course has presented so many positive aspects, but just to name a few, things like access to the workshop has enabled me to broaden my skills and my knowledge base, as well as get me some time out of the classroom. Throughout the college course, I was able to gain the position of faculty rep as well as class rep, and from this I was able to voice some really important opinions, meet incredible people, and gain access to training courses which expanded my knowledge and communication skills in working with people. Not only this, but throughout the entire course, the support from the lecturers, surrounding staff, such as student funding and student advisors, has made even the toughest situations that little bit easier. And for that, I really do say thank you. 
And that is it, my friends. Um, I'll just let you uh, take any questions, Kenji. Um, I, I had just one quick question. So are you sure that each department had access to a Google site to populate um, with information about their specific department and courses? So do they, do they do that themselves or are they supported by learning technologists to populate the, the information there? So perhaps I think the Google Docs, we did one for student services and it was actually our assistive technologist who helped us create that. I am not sure about the hair and beauty ones. Joe, do you know? Yeah, I know. Uh, so where, where, where we are, and it's probably talking about Google in the, in, 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 in the round. Uh, City of Glasgow College has got a My Skills Google domain, uh, and we encourage everything to come through that. But here's, here's, here's the rub. Having shown everybody all of that, uh, people now are really enthusiastic about Google Sites and will tend to create things off the off the, off the main domain, which actually isn't a problem as long as you link it back, but providing they're not asking for lots of a, a GDPR student kind of information and things, and that's where it's a wee bit, and we're just, we're just busy tid tidying that up, but we've done a whole lot of work with, uh, with Google, and it's great to see uh, staff innovating and, and saying, look, uh, rather, rather than just putting this stuff in, into Moodle, uh, we're gonna create a wee bit, a wee bit of extra, and it's, it's that bit of personalization. And, and I said to in the in, in the comments the the teaching staff and the curriculum leaders have been making their own videos, uh, so everything's not got the same production values. And actually, that's a very good thing because it means that the students are going to see that you're going to get things with different production values. And when you get into when you get into your actual course, uh, the lectures might be it might be a recorded Zoom like we're doing just now. It could be other kinds of things, but they've got to get used to seeing that everything doesn't have to have the same 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 kind of a uh, production values. Uh, I think the other thing worth probably mentioning uh, has been the whole production process, uh, which has been great fun, but has 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 has, has had some of its own cha challenges. You know that uh, some folks sent us some videos and said, "Well, here's our videos on Facebook, Joe. Uh, can you now just link them into?" Into, and it's like, well, actually, no, because what we, what we want for accessibility reasons, uh, we're taking all, all, all of the content, we've got a production process, all of the content goes through the college marketing channel uh, onto, onto an anonymized, uh, onto an anonymized uh, feed from, from YouTube, which generates the, the subtitles and all the other things that we need. Uh, and then we pull that through uh, I can't really, we can't really just stick in, you know, your YouTube clip or the, the clip you've just made on the, on your phone that's sitting where, wherever it's sitting. Uh, and, and that's been a good learning curve for us all. So it really has, it's, it's, it's upgraded people's skills and things as well. Uh, and I suppose the other thing just about open learn, while you're previewing the induction piece just now, uh, and that's been critical in, in, in this time of, of COVID, uh, the vision, of course, is much bigger. Uh, that that's us now got a, a, a Moodle site that's up that people can self-register for, uh, and we can push a whole lot of other content through that. So there's a whole lot more things that we can do with short courses for schools and a whole lot of other things we can do to support both the, the Glasgow learning community, but also the broader Scottish or indeed international uh, learning community now, now that, we've got, that we've got open learn. Uh, and some of the courses will remain free, click through, register, but increasingly I think we'll also maybe position some uh, commercial content there as well. Okay. Um, I, if anyone else wants to ask a question, uh, feel free. Um, don't, don't let me dominate. <laughs> um, what, one of the things that came up in the Caledonian um, presentation last time about their induction process is they specifically chose not to deliver the induction through Blackboard, which is their VLE. So you've gone down the route of essentially mirroring the systems that the students will be using when they start their course, which I, which I think there's a lot of positive to that because it's a, it's a good introduction into the systems themselves. Do you, do you feel or anticipate that anyone will struggle with navigating a kind of Moodle structure, Moodle quizzes, the, the, the idea of a Moodle site, which is slightly more complicated than, say, a, a regular 
normal site, whether that's Google or just a WordPress site? I think that's a, I think that's a really good uh, question, Kenji. And we're, and we're there to support them and help them as they go as as they go through. And you'll see there's help desk and other references in, so they can still uh, access us at the back end if they're struggling. Uh, but actually, that was a confusion with staff too. Uh, that when we started doing this, people conflated uh, a website with a Moodle course. Uh, and and what, what we were asked to do was build this middle, middle course. And, and, and we had some quite senior staff saying things like, oh, I want this on the website and I want it to look like this. And we had to say, well, we've got a college website. And if you want to position some of that information on the college website, you, you can do that. But the middle course needs, you know, by the rule of middle needs to, need, needs, needs to look this way. Uh, so it's been a learning curve, curve, curve for all of us, I think, shape, shape, shaping the, the middle course. And we, and we did a few things in the background. Uh, we, we're not in charge of the actual, the, the graphic look of things, but we, we, did a, we did a few things in the background to make it so, so that people can click through it and it's, and, 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 and it's as uh, user friendly as we can make a, a, a middle course. Okay. Can I ask? Uh, uh, absolutely, Jason. Yeah. Um, were there any surprises as to the way in which the, the, the learners were accessing or using the, the materials that you didn't expect? So, so it's, it's too early to tell. Yeah. Uh, it's been live since last Tuesday when the email went out, Scott, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, num the numbers coming onto the site has, has been amazing. So, so yeah. I, th I think it might be five and a half thousand uh, learners have now registered. But what you can see is them registering uh, and then they register and then they might take a day or two to actually work their way through the course. So it's like five and a half thousand registered, 4,000 working their way through the course. Uh, and the interesting bit is the bit I can look at just now is the kind of error logs, which are quite funny because it's lots of people don't read any of the instructions. So they, they try to come straight onto the site without having first registered an email or a, or, or a username or, e or a password. And even between keying in, they can't key in their own, their own email addresses. So quite often, we've, not very often, I think we've had five things that have come all the way back through to the help desk. And it's normally things like, I've done this and I haven't got an email. Uh, and then you look and you see, well, actually you, you spelled your own email wrong. So it's, it's not, that's why it's not come back to you. Uh, and uh, so, so, so at the moment it, it seems, and again, that bit about learners and how they can work their way through it. Five and a half thousand bar barring, I think Scott had a couple of other ones. There's maybe, there's maybe about 30 students that have had difficulty in following the instructions and, and bouncing their way all through. Everybody else is coming coming right through and right onto the site and working their way through the stuff. Those are stunning numbers, given that you only opened it up last Tuesday. So for, for people watching on YouTube, I mean, that's what, that, that's about eight days worth of um, live days that, that people can access the site. Those, that, that's incredible. Um, if you know, under normal conditions, you've, you've created this resource in response to the current situation, but when would you want to open up induction typically in future years, if we weren't in a COVID situation, when would you want people getting into this site? Well, we, ha we haven't had a site like this before. Like I said, at the start, we would have our get ready for college events where they would physically come into the building and it would be around, uh, probably next week is probably when they would start. And um, the induction this year will start online on the 31st of August. And we do have a, um, an induction course that they will work through, but that's on, once they're enrolled, that's on the, the proper Moodle BLE. Yeah, I, I've probably got my, my own broader views about open learn, which, which is a, it's not about the induction course per se, but there's a whole lot of courses and things that we should position on open learn so that people can come and find out and do things anytime uh, about City of Glasgow College. It's a great place to, to, to showcase, but showcasing is the website. The, 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 the Moodle course is really for someone to go and do the, the baby steps, the, 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 the first parts of doing a course. So if we could get learners actually doing the first part of a course for free eh, or, or understanding about the course or doing a wee mini assessment, then actually it makes it easier when we bring them on to the, to, to, to the course too. And everything's blurring, of course, because what, what we would have said is you did a bit online and then physically you come into the college. But actually, a lot of courses, well, you might do a free bit online and then you come online to do the rest of the, the, the course. 
which is their new reality. I, I, I think what you just said there about, so obviously with that online induction, you've got the flexibility to start it earlier than you normally would uh, at, at the beginning of term. So that, that's a good option. But the idea also that, that students who knew they were coming onto the course several weeks before or a month or two before, the fact that they could access small bits of taster learning or introductions to their course, that's a really interesting approach. And, and you know, not, not one that we've, we've come across in many institutions before. Okay, so we have time for one last question. I'm gonna leave the last question for, for Maddie here to offer. I feel, I feel you have a good one waiting there in the wings, Mary. Um, okay, no pressure. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think it looks great. And I, well, obviously I'm gonna try and steal some of the things that are so, um, I think that last point, though, is going to be really fascinating going forward. And Kenji and I were talking about that just before the webinar started. But this whole thing about access, you know, and when you do things and what time of year and, and what order and stuff like that. So I think you've probably got, you know, you're dipping your toe in the water that now, I think, really about that. We need to maybe move away from the kind of way we're always used to doing things you know that induction is something that starts then and stops there or you know and i think that um will probably you know the ability to have sort of small um taster courses or kind of introductory courses that's going to be quite important i think going forward in terms of the, the perhaps the new learners that we might see accessing college you know so hope that need to maybe reskill or upskill or um you know just come back getting them back into that way of learning as well at a time you know that suits that they can do it you know whenever so so yeah i've not got a specific question but i do think it looks really positive and i think your numbers are amazing so i hope um you know once you get through your enrollment and get the students started that you see that continuing and you see them having a really good it sounds like they're going to have a great start, you know, a good experience. So that's great. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, that's all we have time for in this recorded uh, portion of the session. So if you're joining us from YouTube, thanks for, thanks for coming along and hopefully you'll be able to join us for a live session at some point in the future. Until then, thanks to Scott, thanks to Joe and uh, stay safe.